tonight on The Biggest Loser. This week, you are all going to face your fears. I have no idea what's about to come my way this week. And I am terrified. Kids and adults will face their biggest fears. Do you know where you're even going, Bob? You're just going to drop me off wherever? I'm looking for a fin, and then I'm going to throw you right where I see a fin. Like, my greatest fear is that you're, you're going to die. You know, you don't, you don't have to say that to me. Instead of making me sad, you're just making me angry when you say that. I'm fearful of being in closed spaces. I mean, I hyperventilate, I sweat. I want to die. I want to die. And in just a few minutes, see how Francelina is doing today. That's beautiful. Francelina, I'm sorry to tell you that you are not the biggest loser. It's time for you to say goodbye. It's scary to see Francelina go. It's scary to leave this ranch. She's not the only one leaving tonight. It's a double elimination. I can't imagine losing Francie and then immediately going home myself. That just sucks. One of you is leaving the ranch for the entire week. We're going to decide who with the friendly competition. Right now, I'll meet you outside. Get out there and get warmed up. I'll see you in a second. If I have to leave, it will be a disaster. There's so many issues I haven't worked out, and I certainly can't do it on my own. Leaving the ranch is definitely a fear of mine because not being able to be at the ranch and have all the resources right in front of you is going to be really difficult. I'm terrified. One of our biggest fears here on the ranch is once we leave here, are we going to be able to keep everything that we've been doing going? And I just don't know if I'm ready to make that step yet. This week, you are all going to face your fears. Everyone is afraid of leaving the ranch, and one person is going to have to face that fear head on. They will be leaving campus for the entire week. No trainers, no biggest loser gym, or kitchen. You're going to have to face the same challenges as everyone else in America. So here's how this works. You each have a picture, and you each have blocks. So your job is to protect your friends by using your blocks to cover their pictures. You cannot put your blocks in front of your own picture. But once your picture is completely covered, you're safe. The last person remaining whose picture is not covered is the person who will be spending the week off campus. This game has everything to do with the friends you've made in the house. Those are going to be the people who want to save you and keep you from going off the ranch. I instantly knew it was me. I'm the biggest loser on the ranch, and I've also been a raving bitch all week. It makes sense to get me out of here. You will also tonight be rewarded for helping your friends, because the person who stacks the most blocks will win a one pound advantage on the scale. I had a big number this week. I'm not set up for a good week, so I need every advantage I can get. I'll do anything it takes to get the one pound advantage. Let's get this challenge started. The person that I hope leaves the ranch this week is Gina. All the emotional breakdowns, all the attitudes, all the feuds, I'm sick of it. This challenge is over when five out of six people are safe. On your mark, get set, go. box about 25 pounds as soon as i hear that it's a save your neighbor challenge i immediately think of alex i know how hard she's working i know how rough week eight was on her i want to save jackson because if anyone needed to stay it's him danny and joe making quick work of this challenge joe and i have this competitive streak we tend to just go at each other all the time Danny and I are always competing against each other because I've never beaten her in one of these competitions. I said, maybe this is the first night. I didn't see Danny fall, but I heard her. For a split second, I wanted to stop and help her, but I said, oh, here's my chance to win one of these competitions. Danny, are you OK? Yeah. And I have this adrenaline rush that's like, you need that one pound advantage, so just go as fast as you can. 
Danny hustles back, obviously okay from her fall. Looks like Alex and Jeff will be the first to get safe. I didn't have any vlogs. <laughs> I don't blame them. I can't be bitter about the fact that they weren't going to cover me. Looks like Alex and Gina are on their way to helping Jeff. All right, Jeff, you're safe. You are still in this. Alex is safe. Alex, Danny, no more. What? Don't put any more on mine. Jackson is rallying right now against himself, and I just needed to know why. Danny, I'm going to be fine. I realized my whole life I've been ruled by fear. Week nine is Face Your Fears Week, and I am ready for it. Joe, put it on Gina, please. We don't get to live on this ranch forever. I want the opportunity to see how I'm going to perform when I leave all this behind. This could be a test to see how it's going to be when I do have to go home. I don't want to be saved. Guys, let me explain something. I can do this on my own. Please help each other out. Jackson cries out, please stop putting the blocks on me. And if he wants to take the challenge of getting off this ranch and seeing what he can do, I'm going to let him. Danny and Jackson each helping Gina. Jackson's like, I could do this. And working alongside Jackson with the red team, there's no doubt in my mind that he can. Joe, you are safe. Jeff finishes Danny off. It's getting down to the wire, and it's between me and Gina. Everyone wants to see her go away for a week, and this is going to be a hard sell because my goal is to leave. The next person to stack one on my face never gets guacamole again. I start to hear Jackson ask to save Gina. I actually ignore his request and run towards his picture. Jeff, please. Jackson begging everyone to help Gina. Guys, hurry, they're not listening. Two left for Gina, and she's safe. Jackson looking at the last two. Alex, help me out, please. I've never thought I would beg for a disadvantage. Jackson and Danny run into Gina. Those are the last two. One left. Gina is safe. Jackson is not. It's OK. I'm OK. He sacrificed his time on the ranch for me. I'm grateful to have him in my corner. Make me one promise, OK? You won't take a single second of this week for granted. Do not break down. Just be good this week. You're fine. You'll be OK. Jackson said to stop being crazy and to get it done. And I promised him I would, and I will. Let's start with the good news. One person's won a one pound advantage from this pop challenge. Danny, you put out 19 bricks, but it wasn't enough. Nope. Joe, you did 20. Congratulations, you have a one pound advantage at the weigh-in this week. Thank you. I beat you. Because yeah, you I fell. fell. <laughs> it probably made the difference right there. Absolutely. And now, Jackson, you clearly were asking for it. You wanted to face your fear. Because I can depend on myself, and I know that I can keep myself motivated. I want to make sure that when I leave the ranch, that this isn't going to be a problem. This is a good test run. Sounds like you have your head on straight about facing this challenge this week. I have one more thing for you. You're taking someone with you. One other person is going to be spending the week with you, away from campus. You got to tell me right now who it's going to be. I may be sealing someone's fate here, because if I force them off before they're ready, this could be disastrous for their gate. I have no idea who I'm going to take with me. Hi, I'm Francelina, and I spent eight weeks on the ranch. Nice. When I started the show, I weighed 267 pounds. Today, I've lost close to 100 pounds. Woo! <laughs> I'm way more confident now, and I'm genuinely happy. I can do this for the rest of my life. I've changed my life around. You know, I would only take pictures of, like, my face, because I thought my face was cute, but right. never my body. And I, this is right. the first time where I see my body, and I'm like, I'm OK that's, with it being on camera that's now. That's fantastic. It's so, too look cute. All right, it's right on. <laughs>Jackson, one other person is going to be spending the week with you, away from campus. You got to tell me right now who it's going to be. I'll go. I'll go. Jeff? 
I'll take Jeff with me. Wow, you just stood right up for that. Tell me. Uh, I seen the way he motivated the red team when the trainers were gone, and I figure he'll be my own little trainer. Why not? Mancation. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be an excellent pairing. I'm glad he made that decision for me because I wasn't prepared to make it myself. The rest of you are not off the hook. You are going to have your own fears to face as well during the course of this week. You won't know when or where, but it's coming. I am terrified. Fear of the unknown is one of my biggest fears, and I have no idea what's about to come my way this week. I have to face the fear that I may have another meltdown this week. I'm going to do everything I can not to, but I'm really afraid of what this week is going to bring for us. Jackson, Jeff, good luck. I'll see you soon. Go get packed, guys. Thanks, Allison. I don't know how we're going to do it. Jeff and I, we've had good training up to this point, and it's going to be up to us to take that information with us, and hopefully it works out. I hope I made the right decision. We can't afford to lose this way in This is a pretty big deal. Leaving the ranch for a week, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a very, very tough, scary challenge. up to the house and I'm just a bundle of nerves. I don't know where I'm at. I don't have my trainer. I don't have my stuff. This actually looks nice. This is real, baby. This is this is it. This is our chance to see what it's going to be like when we leave the ranch forever. And it's a good opportunity for us to show America. It can be done. Honey, I'm home. Leaving the ranch is going to be tough. But everyday Americans don't have the ranch. Oh, no, we've got water. So as we're exploring the house, we notice that all the cupboards are empty, and of course, the refrigerator's empty. We don't have anything in here. But I think that we learned we can shop for food on a budget. We're on our own. We have money for groceries, and we can go to the grocery store, and we can pick out spinach, or we can pick out donuts. It's really easy to slide back into bad habits. Oh, we've got a spin, spin bike. bike. Real bikes. Actual bikes. I don't think it's quite ready for all 308 pounds of me <laughs> just yet. Leaving the ranch is a huge risk. You're still competing against people who are having their food provided for them, who are working out with world-class trainers. That is an in insane disadvantage. Nothing like the gym no. at the ranch. No. Hi, Dolvin! Hi. It's good to see you. You look great. Thank you very much. Well, Lindsay, you know that this week is Face Your Fears Week. I got to ask you, what's one of your biggest fears? I think my biggest fear would have to be if I go into a doctor's appointment and they just tell me, you have diabetes. What do you know, Lindsay, about diabetes? I know that um, your body doesn't handle insulin like it's supposed to. That's all I know. Lindsay has been diagnosed with being pre-diabetic. Lindsay has prediabetes. It's one of the first steps in the development of diabetes. So even though she's a kid, I can't treat her like one. I need her to see what it's like to live with diabetes. You realize that this is a sickness and an illness that can be prevented through exercise and proper diet. Yes. So I'm going to introduce you to someone who has diabetes. I think that facing your fears is only going to make you stronger. You know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. It's going to be a great week for you, OK? OK. I'll talk to you soon. Hi, Michelle. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. This week here at the ranch is Face Your Fears Week. And we know what uh, your son is mostly afraid of now, don't we? Vegetables. Bingo's biggest fear in the world is vegetables. That's crazy to me, but let me tell you, it is so common to millions of kids out there. Until just last week, Bingo thought that broccoli was made in a factory, and I'm like, no, honey, I am not kidding. Well, we've got to do something about this, Michelle. So yeah. uh, I'm going to send you some recipes that I want you to try. You're going to blend the vegetables and put them into the foods when you cook them so he's never going to see them. OK. 
I'm really hoping that we can get Bingo to eat his vegetables without him knowing it. Bye. So if this plan doesn't work, I don't know what will. What is the thing that you are most afraid of? Probably one of my greatest fears right now is um, losing my mom to obesity. The problem is, like, she's my mom, and the fact that she's not getting healthy affects my journey to get healthy. You know, this is such a challenge. When we decided to take on kids, it's so hard because so much of what's going on, obviously, with kids is what's going on in the home. And you, you can't control all of these different factors. If you go to her and you tell her from the bottom of your heart how worried you are, my hope is that the pain that she's gonna feel in seeing you so hurt and so scared will be more overwhelming than the things she's afraid of that are keeping her from making these changes. Does that make any sense? It does, but like, I don't know, right now it just seems like the most daunting task. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna start the conversation. It's not gonna be easy at all. Sunny's number one fear is Shanti dying because she is so unhealthy. And quite honestly, it's another reason that Sunny keeps her weight on because her mother isn't taking the weight off. Hi. I'm definitely not looking forward to this conversation. It's not gonna be easy to express my feelings like this. But um, I think it's a conversation that I need to have with my mom. We are at the grocery store right now picking up some supplies because our cabinets are completely empty. We have some low sodium marinara sauce, uh -huh. some spices, chicken breasts, some eggs, uh, some spaghetti squash. The very first thing that caught my eye at the grocery store is everything now in the chip aisle. Uh, I love chips. Um, the saltier, the crunchier, the better. That could send me into a feeding frenzy. When we went to the grocery store, we made sure to get things that we knew we would like eating, but uh, we're keeping each other sort of in check. You know, me and Jackson over the last nine weeks have got an opportunity to know each other. What would you prefer? I actually kind of want spaghetti squash. OK. He was Fran Selena's roommate. I spent a lot of time with Fran Selena, so I spent a lot of time with Jackson as well. What do you think they're doing right now? Uh, I'm sure Gina's talking to someone on the show about going home and quitting. <laughs> Joe's cramping up somewhere and complaining about an injury. Uh, <laughs> Taking a break. Alex is probably walking walking the mile, mm -hmm. and Danny is running a 10K somewhere. <laughs> Realistically, we've done more today than I used to do on most days back home. So there were days back home where I tried to get out of bed as little as possible. Like, I would, I would literally, I would be happy if I didn't have to leave my house one time for the entire day. To be comfortable in that type of scenario and to be comfortable in that setting and that lifestyle is, uh, it's disgusting. There is a television show that had nine seasons. <laughs> and I successfully watched all nine seasons of this 25 episode per season show in four and a half days. I just didn't like myself. And I think it's hard to like anyone else or enjoy anything when you genuinely don't like yourself and the person that you've become. Well, since it's Face Your Fears Week, like what's your biggest fear? Wake up one day and be 35, 40, 50, however old, and be upset with the way that my life's turned out, not be happy with the quality of life that I've lived and the things that I've done with my life. You can wrap my biggest fear up as being failure. And I think that's my biggest fear going into this challenge, is failure. If I fail while I still have the support of other people going through this journey with me, who's to say I'm not gonna fail completely if and when it's my time to go home? There's two a week, an excellent week, where neither of us fall below the yellow line. Raise that. Coming up, I warned you that this week you'd be facing your fears. You are going to fall off the side of this building. Oh my god, Allison. I'm fearful of being in closed spaces. Rest in peace. What are you afraid of? Sharks. Have fun. Catch your breath. I just wanted to check in and just see, like, where is your head at? 
I feel very isolated here. The people here, from the very beginning, the, the cast members didn't really like my personality. And I've never been in a situation where people haven't liked me. I mean, I've, I've done everything I could to make people like me. I do do an enormous amount for people. And, and I don't do it expecting anything back, but it seems like when my back is against the wall, no one ever comes out fighting for me. You're telling me that you felt alone, and when you needed people the most, they weren't there. There's a through line here. I see that. It is the pervasive feeling of being alone, being unsupported, feeling disappointed, and then exploding, and then creating more loneliness. I've done that all my life. OK. I don't know how to stop. I don't. I don't know how to stop. And I have a whole bunch of relationships that are gone because of that. My brother, my nephew, my sister-in-law, my sister. I don't have relations with any of them anymore because of that. But I don't know how to change it. Gina feels like no one has her back. So she goes into a situation and she tries to win everybody over and she gives 100% of herself. And when she doesn't get that back, she gets disappointed, explodes, and then destroys the relationship. So the food is what? It's there for you? It's consistent? It's comfort? It's what is it? I've got some void in my life I'm trying to fill. It fills me up and I don't like to be empty. I'll drink 24 ounces of milk to go to bed at night so I won't be empty when I go to bed. The talk with Jillian and the things she said to me and what she was able to pull out of me, it becomes very clear to me that I've had a destructive pattern my whole life, or at least the biggest part of my life, running away because I had given and given and given to someone and then they let me down and just severing that relationship. Everything that you give and do for other people, when you give and do for you, the emptiness will go away. It will go away. Don't worry, we've got time. Okay. We're gonna work on it. It's gonna be Thank okay. You. There is an answer to this. I promise. Thank you, Jill. That pattern has to stop. And I hope I figure it out and it's much more gracefully done than the past week. It's like 7 a.m., so it's bright and early. Ready, Jeffy? Uh, I'm ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Jeff and I put ourselves here, and there is a lot of pressure on us to perform. We're going to hit some coffee and then go hiking because the stuff at the house is not adequate for what we need to be doing this week. It's going to be pretty rad, so we'll see when you get to the top. Jeff, as long as you agree to not defecate on the path, I won't put you on your leash, okay? Good. All right, so this is about halfway. <laughs> Why is your bum so dusty? I fell <laughs> pretty hard <laughs> directly on the probably the meatiest part of my body. My legs are on fire. I can't breathe. I think this is going to be like the end of my life. I'm dying. Seeing as we're not from Southern California, we did not know that the Hollywood sign is on an entirely different mountain way over there. So we're going to focus on getting to the top of this mountain and see how the rest of our day goes. We finally got to the top. It's tough, but we're embracing the challenge, and hopefully the hard work that we're putting in uh, definitely reflects on the scale. Mm -hmm. Bob gave me some recipes so that we can at least take baby steps to integrate these vegetables into bingo. And the key to these recipes is the vegetable puree that you put into the food. So tonight we're having ground turkey meatloaf integrated with the spinach and broccoli and peas and sweet potatoes and carrots. I mean, there's a lot of vegetables in the meatloaf. Hey, guys. Hey. Growing up as a kid, we didn't make him eat them. You know, as a mother, it, it's disheartening. I mean, I feel like I failed. And if this doesn't work, then I don't know where to go from here. Please. What are these? It's meatloaf. It's turkey. What's this? It's a crust. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's getting ready to eat that meatloaf. I know what's in it. I can't believe it.
Bingo takes the first bite, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this might work. It's good. You already ate all night. I know. I'm hungry. I wanted to jump up and down. I wanted to dance. I wanted to go over there and give him a high five. You enjoyed the dinner? Yeah, it was good. Well, the reason I'm asking is because in the meatloaf, mm -hmm. there are carrots and sweet potatoes, spinach, mm -hmm. and broccoli, and peas. It's <laughs> nasty. My mom tells me, you know, there was vegetables in your meatloaf. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, of course, I want to eat them. I just don't like them. So it's like, if you hide them in my food and I get them down somehow, it works. So, OK. That's what we'll do. In the 13 years that Bingo has been alive, he has never eaten that many vegetables in one sitting. So this might be the answer to our prayers. If you had to think about what you would be facing down, what do you think it would be? I'm afraid of small spaces. I'm very claustrophobic. There's so much more going on with these contestants than the obvious. I'm claustrophobic. It's like, no, no. Let's face down fears that are affecting your weight and the quality of your life. I think to myself, if Jillian thinks I'm getting in that coffin, she has lost her mind. Do you know why I chose this for you? Because you're killing yourself, and you're killing your important relationships. I want you to get in this box, and I want you to think about what you can do to change it. I'm fearful of being in closed spaces. I mean, I hyperventilate, I sweat. I've gone into an MRI machine and had to be yanked out within less than five seconds because I couldn't do it. Okay. Rest in peace. I want to die. I want to die. I'm fearful of being in closed spaces. I mean, I hyperventilate. I sweat. Okay. Rest in peace. Have a second chance. times you tried to walk out of this place? How many times have you tried to quit the show? I don't know. I lost count. Yeah. And what's so funny about that is I think the show is the one thing between you and this box. If I let the process work, it'll save my life. I know that. I know that, Do too. you really know that? I do. So before you run, Think, stop and think about this moment. <laughs> do you believe you deserve to be happy? I do. Why? Because at the core of all this insecurity and crap, I'm such a good person. And I deserve to be happy. I can hear her coming to terms with, OK, I don't want this. This is what I've created, and this is what I don't want. I do want something different. I absolutely believe things can get better. I know without a doubt they can get better. This week has just been a small little example of that. I know it's not going to happen overnight, but I know it can get better. I have faith and belief that it can get better, but it starts with me. It starts with me every day. ugly in here. <laughs> I know that, that I can change, and I can change things. I also know it's going to be hard, but I'm, I'm willing to do it. I am willing to do it. It's true. I have a choice today to open a new door, take a breath, and start a whole new chapter in my life. What was on your mind in there? <laughs> <laughs> All the mistakes that I made the week before last, and how that really wasn't 
something that I was proud of and didn't want that to be what defined me because I know I'm more than that. And I am going to be different. I already am different. This week has been different. I wouldn't have lasted 20 minutes in a coffin before this. There's no way. This week alone gave me the strength because I've proved to myself this week that I can get up and do what I need to do every day. Hi. Hi, man. How are you? Good. I'm the Fillmore Middle School guidance counselor. And Delvet um, contacted me to help Lindsay because she's uh, pre-diabetic. I heard that I did had pre-diabetes and I just don't want it to get worse and I'm just like, I don't know who to talk to. You're right on in being afraid of diabetes. Um, not a lot of people here in the school know, but I have diabetes. Food was my best friend at that time. And so I started eating more and more junk food. Before I knew it, I was just not at a healthy weight. And my doctor said, Norma, you have diabetes. How did you deal with it when you when your doctor told you that you had diabetes. I was pissed. <laughs> I like to eat. I like to cook. Um, this was not for me. This is not fair, you know? Right now, I take five pills twice a day. I prick my finger for blood testing um, two, three times a day. And at night, I give myself an insulin shot. I don't like needles, okay? I've always hated needles. Me too. So, you know, this is my little kid. You don't mind seeing? No. I don't want to scare you, but <laughs> this is reality. I want you to know, and I want you to take this seriously. I'm scared of needles. I'm like a cat in water with needles. This is the part I really hate. You have to make sure you get the um, bubbles out. OK, here. And then just go in there and you put it in. It just scares me because what if I get diabetes and I can't live through life like a normal kid and have to go every other hour, every hour, injecting myself with insulin? At this point, you're not there. Isn't that something? You're not yeah. there. And right now, if you're able to, you know, stop the junk food, um, all the sugar drinks, you know, you have a choice. Yeah. So we can do this. We all right? We will do this. Thank you, Marla. So, alrighty, you're awesome. Okay. You take care. All right. Okay. You say hi to your mom for me. I will. She just inspired me right now. I just want to get moving. I have to eat healthier in moderation, and I'm just so thankful that she shared this with me, and I'm never gonna forget this day. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> I'm walking up, and I see a big platform with our individual colored flags flying and big weights with our names on them. And it looks like they're hanging out over the side of this building. <laughs> Are you OK? No, I'm not OK. Just look at the buildings across from me. It'll be fine. I warned you that this week you'd be facing your fears. Today's challenge is definitely no exception to that. But wait, we are missing something. Hey, guys, come out. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> no. no. Like seven different kinds of no already. <laughs> wow, Jackson, I can definitely see how you feel about this challenge. Uh. <laughs> oh. I sort of thought you would be nervous about being out on your own. How has it been? It is definitely a challenge because we don't have anything at the house. Uh, we don't have our trainers or anything. Uh, but I think we've been trying to stay pretty on top of it. All right. Unless you win today, you are going to fall off the side of this building. Oh my god, Allison. <laughs> Each of you will be harnessed in and standing on a platform. We are seven stories off the ground. Mm. Your job is to hold on to 40% of your body weight. So if you drop the weight, we'll drop you. Last person standing wins. The winner of today's challenge gets immunity. Wow. That is the best prize you could get, period. 
It is the biggest prize that we've been given. You know, that's better than a car. That's better than a cash prize at this point in the game. That changes this game dramatically. I'm terrified of heights, but I think I'm more terrified of going home. I just have to hold on to that bar for as long as I can and not look down because I need immunity. I need this. Immunity this week is crucial to me because last week I had a really good number. Everyone else kind of bottomed out. And when you have a low number, usually you'll get a really good number the next time. I have to win immunity because if I drop the hole of the yellow line, I am the biggest loser in the house right now. I'd send me home. We're going to add the 40% right now. The challenge for immunity starts in five, four, three, two, one, go. The challenge for immunity starts in five, four, three, two, one, go. Right off the bat, Jeff already goes to shoulder height. Jackson at shoulder height. As soon as the weight is released, everyone else is able to hold their weight right at the starting point. But mine's so heavy that it jerks me up just slightly. So my strategy is to let the weight slide up and keep my knees bent so I still have some room to extend out farther. weight is 78 pounds, which is extremely heavy for me. You know, my arms are just burning. And I'm trying so hard to put all my weight into my arms and push the bar down. Joe's starting to lose his grip. You release it, and you can't get it back down. It, that lever only works one way. So the more you just let it go a little bit, the more your arms raise. And I'm thinking, this is not good. I don't have a fear of heights for this challenge. My fear is losing the challenge, because if I lose and don't win immunity, there's a really good chance that I'll go home if I fall below the old line this week. My forearm's starting to cramp. Yeah, it's at the very edge of his rope. My forearms are burning. My grip is slipping. My arms are fully extended. At this point, I have two options. Either let my arms break or take my ride to the bottom. Jeff drops it, and he is down. Jeff falls, and I'm like, oh, this week we're facing the fear of being off the ranch, and that's huge. I think there are a lot of people who are looking for us to fail. So for one of us to not get immunity would really suck. Jeff's the first one eliminated from this challenge. You've been hanging on for five minutes. I'm saying over and over, pain is temporary, quitting is forever. Pain is temporary, quitting is forever, and I am not letting go. Jackson holding on to 104 pounds. I'm up on this plank, and my legs will not stop wobbling, no matter how much I tell them not to. And then my shoulders start to really burn. Oh, my god. Oh. I hear Jackson fall. Oh. He's screaming, and I'm just sitting there trying not to laugh. I'm like, don't laugh. This isn't funny. Don't laugh. Oh, my god. Oh! Oh! For just a minute, I thought I'm going to hear a splat on the ground. I'm thinking, dear god, I hope these harnesses are working. Jackson is out. Jeff is out. We are down to Alex, Gina, Joe, and Danny. Quickly, it seems like there's a domino effect. Alex drops. <laughs> oh! Ooh. Alex, the third one out. And then Joe drops. Joe is out! And then when he drops, I'm like, OK, I actually have a chance at this. 11 minutes in, Joe out is down to Danny and Gina, one person walking away with immunity. Who's it going to be? My hands have gone numb. I just kept thinking, I can hang on. Danny holding on to 77 pounds. Gina with 72 pounds. 
Both ladies determined to walk away from here with immunity. I look over and I see Gina, and I'm up high. She's still down low, hanging on strong. I was like, what the hell? Like, how are you still doing that? And I'm like, focus on yourself. Gina's not even there. Just hold on for dear life, because you need that immunity. 18 minutes. Gina, slowly but surely, that bar has been climbing higher and higher. Her hands shaking. Danny so close. I see her shaking. I'm like, you know what? Muscles give out at some point when they start to shake. And so I'm like, just hold on, just hold on. It can't be much longer than this. 20 minutes. Gina loses another inch. Gina's face says it all. This is not an easy challenge. My whole strategy is to keep it below my head. And at some point, it gets even with my mouth and I start to panic because I know if it gets much higher than my mouth, I'm not gonna be able to hang on. <sighs> Putting us forever. Danny, Gina, you have been hanging on 20 minutes. Putting us forever. Gina digging deep, her hands shaking. Gina or Danny, who's gonna leave here today, guaranteed a spot for one more week on campus. As my strength seems like it's giving out, I tried to readjust and it slips. I'm like, crap. So at this point, all I know is two is better than one. So I just kind of slide them together and hope that my hands together can win this competition. I look over at Danny and I see that she's just barely hanging on. She was on her tiptoes. And I say to myself, I can do this. Who's gonna win immunity? Make it to the final five. Gina loses another inch. It's over her head now. I know without a doubt, if I fall below the yellow line at weigh in, I better have my bags packed. So I have to win immunity. Danny hanging on with one hand, not giving up, not quitting. I needed immunity. I am at a disadvantage this week, and I needed every bit I could get. I gotta find another way to make sure I stay here one more week. Oh my God! There you go, Sorry, Gina. Come on now, please. Oh my God, I want immunity. I want the best prize here after such a horrible, horrible, ugly week. This is my moment. <laughs> oh my God, I want it! My whole life, I haven't lived in the moment. Never even stopped to appreciate the accomplishments that I've made, but my moment was today. And uh, that feels pretty good. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm back, I'm back. That was like Gina, last week is gold and I'm back. Oh, man, Danny, you were so close. That was the most important prize I could have ever won, and it just sucks to get that close and let it go. But I'm very proud of Gina. She held on and did really strong. You know, I have a lot to prove this week to myself, to the cast, to the trainers, to everybody that I'm not that person from last week. And I'm so proud of myself for a first time in a long, long time. Well, congratulations, Gina. You have won immunity. You're safe from elimination this week. You are in the final five. Jackson, Jeff, I'm gonna send you back out. Back to face the real world. But I'm gonna see you at the weigh-in. See you guys soon. Congratulations, Gina. Bye. Yeah, what's up? You're looking really serious. Um, I was talking to Jillian, and she told me that the theme for this week on The Biggest Loser is um, to face your deepest fears. My biggest fear is losing my mom to obesity. I'm definitely not looking forward to this conversation. It's not going to be easy to express my feelings like this, but um, I think it's a conversation that I need to have with my mom. It's, it's hard to explain, but throughout the years, you've gone on one fad diet after another, and you end up kind of putting the weight back on again and just a bit more weight as well.
My mom steadily throughout my life gained and gained and gained and gained. And I really think that's why I gained weight. I don't want to see her miserable like this. You know, I'm scared that if you continue to gain weight, you know, you might just get really sick. And I love you, and I want you to be there. I don't want you to get sick. I want you to be able to experience all the amazing things that you can experience when you're overweight. I mean, you can't come on roller coasters with me and dad. You can't, um, you know, tie your shoelaces with ease. It's hard for you. You know, you don't, you don't have to say that to me, to my face. You, instead of making me sad, you just make me angry when you say that. What? I mean, you don't have to tell me that, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. I know I can't do it. I mean, I've talked to her so often before, and she knows that I really want her to lose weight and become more healthy. But it's kind of as if the minute I start talking to her about these things, she gets defensive, and she thinks I'm criticizing her. You know, we're making these changes in our life, and I want her to know how important it is to me that she's making these changes with me. Like, my greatest fear is that you're gonna, you're, you're gonna die. I don't want you to get so heavy that you get sick and die. It's, it's a very scary thing for me to sit here and listen to you saying, talking about your fears, because a mother is supposed to console her daughter and, you know, take away her fears. So to be the cause of those fears is something quite devastating. This is easily the most terrifying conversation I've ever had. Everyone knows that we come with an expiration date, but still to know that your daughter is scared by the thought and she thinks it's a very real thing that could happen in your life, it's, it's really scary. I mean, um, I don't want to die. <laughs> I definitely don't want to die. I realize that, you know, it's really a scary thing and, and I see what you're saying, you know, I really hear your fear and I promise you that this time it will be different and it's not just me, you're there to support me and we're going to do it together. Sunny is really the best thing that happened ever to me in my life and she is really not only moving herself forward but moving me forward as well. It's really made me feel that this journey is going to be successful as long as we're in it together. Like, I'm just really happy that we had this conversation. Yeah. All I want is to go to college knowing that you're healthy and happy. That's yeah. my one wish. I will. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. OK. I hope that um, the conversation that I had with her really uh, rang true in her mind. At this point, I kind of feel like I need to accept that I've done everything that I could have done to help my mom. And um, you know, maybe something that I said hit home, and she really does want to make some drastic change. Hello, pumpkin. Hi, Jill. I'm sure you're wondering why I've summoned you today. Yes. We're going off campus for a little adventure. Okay. But before we do, I brought you a treat. This is the new Uber bar by Lara Bar. Lara Bar, huge supporter of The Biggest Loser. And, I mean, here are the ingredients, right? Almonds, dried cherries, pecans, raisins, dates, honey, and sea salt. All the stuff we have in the kitchen. Exactly. Super clean, tastes amazing, and they're gluten-free. Take a bite of that. Oh, my God, it's really good. <laughs> my favorite, of course, is the Bananas Foster. That's what, this one's awesome. That one's awesome, right? I really want to try a roasted nut roll. So, as we promised, it's Face Your Fears Week. Mm -hmm. And you once mentioned to me that you were afraid of singing in public. Uh uh. So no. that's what we're doing. Yes, no, you're going to be great. You're going to be awesome. Danny loves to sing, but she's afraid of singing in public. I think she's afraid of really being seen by people because if they see her for who she is, it won't be enough. Fear can paralyze us or it can motivate us. How you choose to respond to your fear is really going to play an enormous role in the way that your life plays out, right? But the reality is, if Danny gets out there and she sings in front of all these people, I think she's going to realize that she already is the woman that she wants to be. All right? Get your snacks. Trust you. Let's rock and roll. Come on. 
So right now, I'm taking Danny to a small lounge where she can overcome her fear of public singing. The one thing I really love is singing. It's been something I've been avoiding for years just because I was always the fat girl or the girl who wasn't pretty enough, and I thought those things outweighed what I could have performed on stage. Thank you so much for coming. Danny is facing a big fear here today, and she's going to be singing for you for the first time in how long? Years. Years! <laughs> Let's hear it for Danny. <laughs> I feel my legs shaking. I am, I feel like I'm convulsing right now. I'm like, can you people see me? Am I having a seizure? I'm gonna take a sip of water. <laughs> I don't know if I just wanna run the other direction right now. <sighs> All right, Joe, do you know why I brought you out here? <laughs> this is Face Your Fears Week. It is Face Your Fears Week, and what are you afraid of? Sharks. Here we are in San Pedro, California today, where Joe is about to face his biggest fear. He thinks it's sharks. I'm gonna get you to swim from point A to a point B out here today. But there are great whites out here too, right? I mean, there are sharks out here. You're gonna be jumping out of this boat, but it's not just about, yeah, I'm afraid of sharks. It's about getting you out of your comfort zone. It's about getting yourself pushing forward into your life. What better time to get him to face his real fears I really do believe that it's his need for control. And I'm trying to tell him, don't think so much and just lose the control. And the more control you lose, the more you're going to gain control in the end. And let me tell you, we have never done this on The Biggest Loser. Do you know where we're even going, Mom? You're just going to drop me off wherever? <laughs> I'm looking for a fin, and then I'm going to throw you right where I see a fin. I know we're pretty far from the beach now, Mom. Whoa! I'm like, Bob, how far is this? He says 500 yards. That's a pretty good swim in an open ocean. I guess the biggest thing that scares me about sharks is not being in control. When you're in the water, they're the boss. And if something happens, usually they win. Are you going to shore? Yeah. All right. I'll meet you over there. All right, I'll see you over there. It's going to be a good day for you. Good day. Have fun. I think the thing that's making me not run the other way right now is the fact that this is something I've wanted to do my whole life, and here it is on this day. And I know Jill's going to be staring at me, and that she believed in me, so I need to believe in me. So this season's theme is Challenge America. So I'm going to sing the national anthem for you guys. Take a deep breath, and here we go. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright. I feel myself convulsing. I can't hit the right notes because I'm just so shaky. Through the perilous fight. And then at just some point, you're like, just let it go. Oh, say does that star spangled banner get it? like holy crap <laughs> that was horrible but the best thing of my life at the same time oh, you did great why has all this time gone by and you haven't pursued this you love it so much i think i just never felt i was good enough to try and then my weight was always a factor you know i always thought people would just see the fat girl on stage and not see me and i didn't feel it was a realistic goal to do. 
I guess I always focus on so many of the negative parts that I never saw, like, the good parts of it. I always thought everything had to be perfect. Why? Because I thought that was the only way I could be happy. And every time I wasn't happy, I was like, well, it's because it wasn't perfect. Has and everything really... ever been perfect? No. <laughs> and that's when you feel like, really? Consistently unhappy. That's, that's not a way to live, sweetie. It's never going to be perfect. That's my point. It was like an epiphany. I've been searching for this perfection in everything I do all the time that it's not possible. It's the imperfection and it's the struggles. It's the days of good and bad that get you through and make you a whole person. And, you know, just having that conversation made today mean even more. Today was a success for you. You jumped right in and you took it on and you were fearless. I'm proud of you. If you want greatness, if you want to be awesome and be your best self, then you have to take risks. And that's what Danny did tonight. That was excellent. <laughs> Let's do more of it. Are you going ashore? Yeah. All right. I'll meet you over there. All right, I'll see you over there. It's going to be a good day for you. Good day. Yeah. Have fun. There you go. I said, let's just do it. And I dove in and started swimming. Joe's got 500 yards to swim. Just imagine 500 yards out there, and your biggest fear could be swimming all around you, and you don't even realize it. It's going to be a good workout for you, too. You're going to need it. we got a weigh-in coming up. When I'm at home, you know, I'm in control of my surroundings. I'm in control of everything. But when you can't see and you're just swimming in open water, it's, uh, it gets, it's nervous. I like to be able to see what's going around me, and I couldn't see. If it works out the way that I had planned, Joe is going to come out of this ocean a completely different man. This is a real important lesson and bigger than just being afraid of sharks. The bigger lesson he's trying to get to me is let go. Don't just hold on to those things or things you can't control, be afraid of, or not do it because you don't want to get hurt, you want to do this. Let go and experience those things and don't always try and control everything around you. Talk about facing your fears, there's no fear. When Joe came out of that water, he had that big smile on his face. He felt stronger. He had that clarity that I was hoping that he would have. What do you think you learned from this today, Joe? Fear is, you know, it's like pain. It's weakness leaving your body. Just let it go. Just don't even think about it. That's the lesson today. Not let anything hold you back. Just, like, jump into this new life that I've got. And I think that's how you just approach today. I mean, I'm really proud of what you did today. Right. Letting it go, you get to see a bigger picture, and you get to... You expand farther than you thought you could. It's a beautiful experience, so I'm, and I'm starting to feel that, and it's uh, really, really nice. I feel I good about it. this. Thanks, I feel good about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm proud of me, too. What do you think Jackson and Jeff are doing right now? Probably playing a board game. <laughs> you think? Gina and I, we were really close at the beginning, but we're just not as close, only because of her outburst and sometimes the way that she acts. I'm going to talk to you about something selfish and personal. Um, I had a disastrous week, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry it affected the team. That wasn't me last week. And I think probably you of all people know it wasn't because you've worked out with me the longest. Mm -hmm. And I apologize to you. Um, that wasn't me, and you won't see that version again, that defiant, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that person, and um, I'm sorry for it. One of the things that I have learned along the way is that sometimes just an apology will, will make a huge difference if it's sincere and from the heart. I completely understand. That's why I'm, with me, when people are like, Gina, I'm like, just let Gina be Gina. When Gina wants to have her moment, you have to just let Gina alone. You can't be in her face. Just, just let her be. She'll, she'll come around. When Gina apologizes, I think it's really big of her because Gina has been having blow-ups, you know, since the beginning of us being here on the ranch. And for her to step up and apologize, it goes to show that she really is trying to change and she really is trying to become a better person, not only for herself, but for the entire house. I think I came around today. I got sun. Look how sunburned I am. <laughs> I do feel closer to Alex having apologized. I have a few more apologies to make in the house. So, 
Last chance workout, yeah? This last chance workout is probably the most important last chance workout Jeff and I have had. We already have Joe with a one pound advantage. And with the challenge yesterday, Gina has immunity. So we've just got to blow it up. We have to prove that we're ready to take this challenge on at home. And if we don't show that, it'll just be devastating. Since we're in the real world and we don't have much of your fingertips, being that we're in the real world, uh, we're going to utilize our real world surroundings to the fullest. You take blue. I think all that would be pretty upset with me. <laughs> you know, we decided to take the trash cans, run them up and down the street. When we get back to the starting point, 20 jumping jacks, 10 squats, and do it again. So uh, our key is going to be cardio. We're not going to stop moving. 18, 19, 20. This is our opportunity to burn the last little amount of weight that we possibly can before we have to face the scale. All right. <laughs> in five seconds, you're going to run as fast as you can for 30 minutes. Get ready in five, four, three, two, <laughs> go to work. I am very scared about going back to the ranch after being at the house because we're going to have to face that scale. And we can't afford to fall below that yellow line. <laughs> Push yourself. Last chance. Work out. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <sighs> Let's go. <sighs> Three, dig. <laughs> Joe. Ah, uh, work with me. <laughs> I'm trying. Last chance. Come on, girl. Dig deep. Go somewhere else in that head. Joe, give me the burn on your body meeting your band right now. 1,200. That's it. 1,200. Move your ass. Let's go. You guys all know it out there is face your fear weak. Stay low and push off. <sighs> there you go. That was a good one. That last chance workout is the dreaded fear of any and everybody who does this thing. So guess what? This is the biggest fear of them all. Come on, last chance. Last chance. Danny's at a huge disadvantage. She pulled a big number last week. So Danny has to work twice as hard than anyone else just to stay above the yellow line. Three, come on. <laughs> Two, yes. Time. <laughs> That's it. Good. And remember, belly button pulled into your spine, squeezing your bum, tucking it forward. So tailbone's tucked, abs are pulled in, protecting the back. Joe does have a one pound advantage, but for a big guy, that's not enough to keep him safe. He's going to need to really work today in this last chance workout to stay above the line. Go. Get it to me. Come on, push. Nice. Come on, Jay. Get into it. I don't know where she comes up with this stuff, but it is a solid workout. Good, fast as you can. Oh, your quads, your glutes, your hands, everything is just on fire. Gina, you're gonna come off, run up and back, up and back, while Alex, you're tossing that ball, okay? Ready, and go. Last chance workout, let's go. 18, give her a hard number to beat. 19, 20, come on. Bob knows that I'm a competitor, and he knows that if Gina does 30, then I'm going to want to do 36. Or if Gina's running a 7, I'm going to run an 8. He's using Gina as a tool to make me work harder. 28. 28's the number to beat. Ooh. Gina, the number is 28. I think the expectation of everyone is that I'm just going to halfway do it because I have immunity. I wanted to make it loud and clear that I was here to work hard, whether I had immunity or not. Hurry up. Don't let her win. I really gave it my all this week. I know that I've made a lot of physical changes this week and also a lot of emotional changes and just hope that it all pays off. Stop. Oh, good job, Alex. Oh. Two months ago, Britta teamed up with The Biggest Loser and joined the challenge. They donated Britta products and gave $10,000 to fund a local sports program to get the kids in Sunny's community active with the goal of inspiring healthy habits after school and at home. That's it, ladies. You're doing a great job. I can't tell you how thankful we are to Britta. When the kids get involved and they, they move, they feel better about themselves. It changes lives. Go, 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 go. That's it. Good, 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 good. See, making sure that drinking enough water is an important part of your routine. So follow the 8x8 plan and drink 8 ounces of water 8 times a day to help you stay hydrated, whether you're on the court, on the go, or at home. Go! I'm just so happy to be able to share this experience with these kids, and I think it's awesome. Instead of reaching for a soda, grab a Brita pitcher and have a glass of great-tasting water. Thanks to Brita and the community of Rochester for encouraging kids to lead a healthy lifestyle.
To see what Bruda can do for you and for a chance to win a trip to the biggest loser resort in Malibu, visit NBC.com slash Bruda. just seemed like all the odds were stacked against me. I was so close in the first pop challenge to get a one pound advantage, and then I was so close in the challenge to get that immunity. Everything I tried, it just wasn't working this week, and I'm just like a nervous wreck. This week, you have all faced your fears, but tonight, you face something that everyone fears. We all have a healthy fear of the biggest loser scale. Tonight, two people will fall below the yellow line and be up for elimination. It's the two people with the lowest percentage of weight loss this week. Jeff, Jackson, welcome back. Thank you. We've missed you on campus. So Jackson, you were out there on your own. How did you do? We worked hard every single day. There's literally nothing that we could have done differently. Uh, we... I, I can think of something. Go ahead. I, how about don't volunteer? How about that? Well, Could that have gone different? Let's, let's think about this. Okay. In a week yeah. or two weeks, whenever it happens, we're going home regardless. We're going to have to face the real world. I wanted to have the opportunity to go out into the real world, see what I'm still struggling with, while I have the chance to come back and fix it. I, I'm still not buying that, because here's what I think. If you were to go home tonight, you, what if it costs you the opportunity to be a finalist on the show? It won't. Okay. I Jillian, hope not. I, I I'm hope promising not. you. We haven't even started the weigh-in. She has no idea how hard we've worked. She has no idea what we've been through, and she's running her mouth already, and I can't believe this is what we have to deal with before the weigh-in even starts. I kind of made the decision, kind of using Jill's advice, to do something that I need to do for me without worrying about how it's going to affect anyone else or how it's going to make anyone else feel. Not to slight anyone else's fears here, but a lot of the fears that everyone faced this week are fears that they don't ever have to do again. And the fear that me and Jackson faced is a very real fear that all of us are going to face as finalists or as eliminated contestants within the next three weeks. I don't like the idea of any of them uh, being away from here. You know, most of all, Jeff. Jeff, like, goes on these up and down weight loss. I want them to be here as much as they possibly can until they are being pushed out the door. And now we're going to see what the scale has to say about it. But before we do, Joe, you won the pop challenge. So you have a one pound advantage on the scale. Gina, you won immunity. So as long as you did not gain weight, you are safe from elimination this week. We're gonna get you on the scale first. See how you did. <laughs> Gina, when you first started this competition, you weighed 245 pounds. Last week, you weighed in at 180 pounds. Gina, your current weight is. buried basically in a coffin and I came out a new person and that's a symbol of what this week has been like for me last week I was an ugly ugly person and this week I was reborn and it feels really really good we all saw a really big change in Gina this week you see that this girl is like come in with a completely different vision so it really showed Gina thank you good work thank you. good job <laughs> Gina got up and she got a really good number. I feel really good about where Gina is at. I think she's stable, and I think there's hope there for the first time. Gina, you lost seven pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 3.89%. Since America first saw you weigh in nine weeks ago, you have lost 72 pounds. <laughs> Congratulations, you have immunity. You are safe from elimination tonight. We will see you next week. Jackson, we're going to weigh you in next. As I walk up to the scale, all I can really think about is the decision I made to leave. And if I were to go home because I made a choice that I didn't have to make, I'll be very upset. Jackson, when you first started this competition, you weighed 328 pounds. Yes, ma'am. I can definitely see your nerves on the scale now. Um, I... I've had weeks where I've worked really, really hard to the point where I didn't think I could stand up anymore and faced bad numbers on the scale. I just hope that that's not a similar situation here because Jeff and I really did work as hard as we possibly could. 
Jackson, your previous weight was 261 pounds. Your current weight is? Jackson, your previous weight was 261 pounds. Your current weight is? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this is proof that if I go home and I don't have the equipment and I don't have someone shopping for my groceries, I can do it. The whole point of training you is to teach you that you can do it. That's a great number for you, a great number. Jill does not look happy. No, honey, I love that you got that number. I mean, I'm super proud of you. That was hard and you proved yourself, but you did it as a martyr of like, I have it together, none of you do, I will fall on the sword. This wasn't about falling on the sword for anybody else. It didn't matter who I was saving. It you was gotta because save, you I gotta save yourself. Thank you. You gotta save yourself. That's the problem. But I think Jillian is re-emphasizing the fact, make sure you do things for you first. first. Okay. Thank you, Jackson. Con and by the way, congratulations. Thank you. I get it. I understand. I understand. Okay. Jackson, you lost 11 pounds this week for total percentage of weight loss of 4.21%. There are four players left to weigh in. Jeff, you're up next. My biggest fear in life is failure. And if I fail and fall below the yellow line this week, it's no one's fault but my own. Jeff, your starting weight was 388 pounds. So, you and Jackson were side-by-side side all week long. Does his good number help your confidence tonight? I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really hoping that the hard work that we genuinely did put in uh, pays off. Your previous weight was 308. Jeff, your current weight is... Under 300 pounds. Uh, 16. This honestly was my biggest fear. It's failure. And this was gonna be my week to go home that I wanted to go home knowing that I genuinely stared my fear in the face. And hopefully that's a good enough number to make sure that I didn't fail. Bob. Jeff had a point to prove. And when Jeff has a point to prove, this is what's gonna happen. I want this mentality that you have right now taking you the rest of the way. Thank you. Jeff and Jackson pull an 11 and a 13. I'm like, holy cow. And I'm happy for them because they did it off the ranch. So I think it gives the rest of us some hope that, you know, maybe we can do it too. Jeff and I have pulled insane numbers. We have learned a lot from three amazing trainers. They have taught us a ton of great lessons, and I will be grateful for them for the rest of my life. You lost 13 pounds this week, Jeff, for a total percentage of weight loss of 4.22%. You guys obviously were working out and eating right together because you are one hundredth of a percent apart. Three players left to weigh in. Joe. Joe, your starting weight was 364 pounds. Looking at your previous weight now, Joe, you are nine pounds away from losing 100. That was something I was thinking about all week starting out was getting that nine pounds to get to that 100 pound mark. Let's see what the scale says to guarantee that you are safe from elimination right now. With the one pound advantage, you need to have lost more than 10. Your current weight is. <laughs> you crushed that 100 pound goal you set for yourself. You can't imagine. It's just like you're you're so elated. It's just like I really just lost a hundred pounds. I mean, that's that's the person for some. I mean, just lost a person. Being the first to get to hundred pounds, it's uh, I'm very thankful that and, and grateful that I was able to do that. It's 
I never thought I could do it. So first of all, Joe, congratulations. You have lost 103 pounds. <laughs> Joe, you had a one pound advantage from the pop challenge, so your total percentage of weight loss was 4.76%. Congratulations. He pulls a 12. That's when it really starts to hit me. Oh my God, yeah, they had all the advantages this week. They have their trainers, they have their gym. Slowly I'm starting to realize that it may not have been the smartest decision to leave all that behind. We have two people left to weigh in. And we are at that yellow line. Alex, we're gonna weigh you in next. Alex, your starting weight was 240 pounds. In order to guarantee that you are above that yellow line right now, you need to have lost more than eight. Your current weight is. I mean, that's such a great number, Alex. That is, that is such a good number, but sweetie. But still not good. It is good, babe. I saw you working, and I saw a different girl. We all saw a different girl. You doubled your average. Is it good enough right now? No, it's not good enough, but man, for you specifically, it's huge, all right? This is the part where you can shut out the outside world and say, I don't care. It's good enough for me. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. I really am. I am OK with the eight that I had, because I know that for me that it was a major accomplishment. You lost eight pounds this week, Alex, for a total percentage of weight loss of 4.1%. And I'm sorry to say that that is not enough. You are below the yellow line. We got to get Danny on the scale, see how she did. Girl. Danny, your starting weight was 258 pounds. Danny, you are standing here on the scale with no advantage, no safety. It's got to be tough. Yeah, if there was any week for me to need immunity, it would have been this week. Every number that went by, you know, was bittersweet because you're happy for them because they pulled an amazing number. But at the same time, you're like, oh my God, I have to pull a number of a lifetime tonight. In order to guarantee that you're above that yellow line, you need to have lost more than eight pounds. That's a tall order. Not to say she couldn't do it, but it's like, it's, it's like unfair to ask it. It's tough. Danny, your previous weight was 194 pounds. Your current weight is. When all the odds are stacked against me, this is my time to show how hard I've worked and everything I've learned. This is my week, and I need it to be successful. Want to be a contestant on The Biggest Loser? Log on to NBC.com for details. Danny, your previous weight was 194 pounds. You need to have lost more than eight to be above that yellow line and safe from elimination. Your current weight is. <laughs> I didn't even know how to react. It was just like, do I cry? Do I jump? Do I get excited? This is like the 10th time you've got up there, and I'm like, you have no business getting that number. I can't believe it. Just lost seven pounds last week. <laughs> You're I can't telling me. believe it. Congratulations, Danny. Thanks, Good Alex. Work. You know, this whole week I was terrified that I was going to send myself home because I couldn't bring it to the table in those challenges, but Getting this 10 just shows I don't need the safety net. I earned every inch of that 10 pounds. You lost 10 pounds this week, Danny, for total percentage of weight loss of 5.15%. Not only are you safe from elimination, you won the weigh-in tonight. I won something! <laughs> Congratulations to the player who has the highest percentage of weight loss so far. That's still Gina. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is still a yellow line, and two people have fallen below it, Alex and Jackson. One of you will be going home tonight. 
and the four of you will vote to send one person home. So, Bob, Jillian, Delvet, it's time for you to say goodnight to your players. Being in the bottom two is horrifying. I left the ranch for a week already. I'm not ready to leave it for good. There are four of you voting tonight, just to be clear, in the event of a tie. It is the player with the lowest percentage of weight loss. We'll go home, and tonight that would be Alex. Danny and Alex have gotten really close. Jeff and Gina were both former teammates with her. I don't know how close everyone got after Jeff and I left. This is just scary. When it gets down to elimination, it's the hardest thing that we do here. What's going to be best for me or what's best for this person? And it's kind of a toss-up sometimes. Oh, this, this is not good. I thought I already knew what I wanted to do, but just seeing him in front of me, it just makes the decision so much harder. Like, am I making the right choice? It's a tough decision. Alex was on my team. I worked out with her day after day. It's hard. Alex is like a little sister. Jackson, someone that I spent the entire week with, him motivating me, me motivating him. It's very tough. All right, everyone has had a chance to cast their vote. Joe, let's start with you. Jackson and Alex, I mean, they threw amazing numbers. I'm just like, how do you vote somebody off? And I wanted to see who that person was that inspired me, you know, who really was, like, lifted me up when I needed lifting up. And for that reason, tonight my vote was for Alex. OK, Alex, that is one vote for you. So, Danny. You know, Alex is really getting into the swing of things, and Jackson is just the motivator that he's always been, I think. But unfortunately, someone had to go, and I did vote for Alex. And I'm sorry. That is two votes for Alex. And that is enough, Alex, to send you home. I'm taking a lot home with me when I go home tonight. And that emotional stress and drama that I had is what caused me to gain weight to begin with. And now that I've overcome that here on the ranch, I can go home a more confident person. Alex can finally be proud of herself. And that's where I am right now. I'm going home proud of myself. Alex, I'm sorry to tell you that you are not the biggest loser. It's time for you to say goodbye. OK. Bye, guys. <laughs> You made it past your fears. You made it past that scale. And you've also made it to a major milestone. That grin on Danny's face tells me she knows what I'm about to say. Congratulations, you've made it to makeovers. Oh, makeover week, baby, yeah! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I totally made it to makeover week. I haven't told you the best part. Not only will millions of Americans be enjoying and celebrating your makeovers with you, but so will your families, because you are going home. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> you are going to get to go home and reveal <laughs> the new you to the people you love most. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you soon. We get to go home. We get to see our family, our friends. Just to be able to show what I've done here and how their support has helped me is just going to be the most gratifying experience of my life. When I first went to the Biggest Loser Ranch, I was 240 pounds. Today, I weigh 170 pounds, a total of 70 pounds lost. Jillian would always accuse me of not giving it my all. Jill, I really am trying my best. No, you're not. Since being home, I've wanted to show her that I can get out of my comfort zone and give it 200%. And I do that by staying in Planet Fitness six days a week, sometimes four hours a day. 30 more seconds. My life has changed completely. I don't feel like anyone is judging me, and I'm not judging myself. Before Biggest Loser, if I was out shopping with my mom, it was so embarrassing to know that your mom could dress nicer than you because she's smaller than you. This is cute. What's that? Small? Yes. But now, my mom and I, we're the exact same size. That is cute, girl. Why don't you buy this so I can wear it? There were moments where I would just break down and cry in a fitting room. But now, the fitting room is like my best friend. Oh my gosh, look at you. That is beautiful. The Alex that has returned from the ranch, she's more confident. She's happy. Look at you. 
and words cannot express how proud I am of her. The sexy, so good. I now know that I am more than just a pretty face. I'm strong. I am everything that a woman is supposed to be, plus more. Here's a look at what's happening on the next all-new Biggest Loser here on NBC. Next Monday, it's the most anticipated episode. I'm so freaking excited. Of the season. Welcome to Makeover Week. See their astounding transformations as they head home to share them with the ones they love. It feels amazing. But the temptations of home will be their toughest challenge yet. Hardest thing I've ever done. Ever. The Biggest Loser Makeover event next Monday here on NBC.